Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey with what I guess is probably going to be my uh, final uh, video of 2019 and also of the uh, the entire decade as we head into uh, 2020. Um, so this is my review of uh, the year, if you like, 2019 as far as my Fountain Pen Journey goes, a bit of an update. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's been a very, very interesting year for me. Um, I'd firstly like to thank you all um, for liking, subscribing, commenting on my videos because you've turned this channel into a real sort of two-way com conversation, which is great. It's not just uh, some old bloke from the north banging on about fountain pens. Uh, you've made it interactive, which is wonderful to see. So thanks very much to all of you for uh, for that. Um, yeah, two years ago this month, I actually started my YouTube channel the fountain pen journey channel um bit of a gap in between but this year has really really seen it go go sort of from a small tiny little thing to something which is actually really quite entertaining and fun to do so it's because of you guys that i do these videos because i enjoy it i get a lot out of it and it saves my wife having to listen to me talk about fountain pens to her which she isn't happy with so it's all going really well so thanks very much for that um, I was going to do top 10 pens, top 10 inks, but I couldn't decide, to be honest. I No. So what I'm going to do, I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about the things that uh, happened in my own fountain pen journey uh, this year, and not along with a few other things fountain pen related in 2019. I'm going to discuss some of my, if you like, standout pens from uh, from this year, and some of the standout inks. So there will be a fair amount of me talking Lots of pens to look at, lots of inks, things like that. So don't don't fear, it's not just going to be me waffling away for half an hour. Um, so where are we? Well, 2019 was the year that, that I discovered paper. And I must admit, I've only really come uh, into this stage of the hobby very late in 2019. Now, as far as I'm aware, my fountain pen journey has kind of followed the same path that many others um follow and you do read about on the internet and it starts off where you fall in love with the pens and you love the pens and you end up collecting the pens using the pens things like that and then sooner or later you start realizing that there's more and more inks more interesting colors things like that to look at and you start getting into the inks paper is the last thing you get to because let's face it paper is pretty damn boring it's uninteresting it's the stuff that you write on it it doesn't do anything spectacular or fancy when you look at the pens and the inks. Um, however, this year I've really, really started to appreciate um, being able to write on good quality paper, which shows off the inks. And more to the point, doesn't actually make the pen writer, the nib write, poorly. Um, our work paper... Um, copy of paper is pretty absorbent and terrible but i don't write a lot on that but our um my employer changed their notebooks that they provide us with to staples 100 percent recycled stuff as opposed to the 100 percent recycled but better quality stuff and it is shocking it's filling the uh, tines of my nibs with fibers it's causing blockages it's causing uh great big thick lines on the page it's terrible so I'm not very happy with uh, with using their notebooks and I've started to use my own and various other ways of recording information written down and I've started to use different types of papers <coughs> excuse me so I mean you can see here I've got a Rhodia um, lined pad and Rhodia paper for me is absolutely great because <coughs> excuse me because it's really really well behaved you don't get huge amounts of bleed through, hardly ever get show through. It's smooth, but not too smooth. Dry times are acceptable, um, and it's available quite inexpensively in a whole host of different sizes. So I really do love Rhodia. Um, so 2019, for me, year of paper. Rhodia, yeah, you definitely get a tick in the box. Um, I have found other sort of fountain pen um, uh friendly papers which have been quite good but a lot of those have been have been fairly unbranded um but rhodia for me is the standout 
it's not the best because sheening inks don't show the best um, best sheen on this paper I've found. I've actually found some of the cheaper non-branded papers to show better sheening properties. So it's kind of matching the pen and the ink to the paper and you've got three things. It's like the fire triangle, pen, ink, paper. To get all three, you've got the holy trinity and everything's great. Take one away and it's all going a bit wrong. So, yeah, I've s s certainly discovered um, paper this year. Anyway, I'm not going to bang on too much more about that because paper is boring. Um, let's go into 2019 as far as well, what's been uh, what's been sort of happening in the industry. Well, for a start, I attended my first Pelican Hubs. Um, which I thought was a very interesting um, event. I've never attended a pen meet before, so it was a good opportunity to sort of dive into one of those without feeling like a, um, a complete outsider at my local meet. Now, if you go back through my um, playlists, I've got Fountain Pen Journey updates, and it's in there, all the run-up to the Pelican Hubs 2019, along with the thoughts about the actual hub afterwards. So that was an interesting experience. Um, what else has happened? Well, this community, I've already mentioned it. You guys, you made this channel. You're doing a great job because it's keeping me, um, keeping me motivated to keep producing content. It's never going to be flashy. There's never going to be fancy titles and editing and all these sort of things because I just don't have time. So for those of you who have supported me through my fountain pen journey, once again, many thanks because... I hope I'm producing content that you find interesting, informative, and gets you out there using your pens. Um, what else? New pens. I've got quite a lot of new pens this year um, because those lovely people in China keep producing lots of really inexpensive pens that which actually look very good. <laughs> and they also write well. So I kind of got away from 2017 with my first Jinhao pens kind of got to the point now where I'm believing more in other Chinese manufacturers which I'm finding to be way more consistent and better quality than Jinhao but still at very 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 affordable prices so this channel will always concentrate on the lower end lower cost inexpensive pens um, because let's face it at the end of the day one of my favorite pens is this little beauty here a Moonman M600S in teal, teal blue. I love it, really, really love it. And it's so disappointing um, that this material looks very blue under the camera lights. There's nothing I can do about it, but it is a very nice uh, teal green, beautiful, beautiful material. And this is modelled very closely on the um, oh, Parker Duo Fold Centennial which is a classic fountain pen that costs hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And I have something special coming next year, which is along these lines. So keep, uh, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, and you will find out what that is. But these Moonman M600Ss are really, really good pens. I absolutely love them. Um, and it's produced, and Moonman have produced a Parker Duo Fold Centennial for an absolute fraction of the price. I mean, ridiculous. I mean, for somebody like me, I'm never going to pay several hundred pounds for a Parker, Parker Duo Fold Centennial. It's, sorry, it's out of my league. So these, and to be produced in such lovely material, this lovely acrylic, um, these have really, really ticked my box this year. So let's get into the pens that I've really, really enjoyed using this year. Um, we'll start off, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Right, so the Moonman M600S. I've got a little collection of these because they are such great looking pens. The good writers, really attractive acrylics, good quality really 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 nice pens absolutely love these pens so there's the uh, teal blue lake blue which is a sort of cracked ice green um, which is a different sort of finish 
um, sort of semi-translucent. There's a lot of opalescence, pearlescence, your toyancy in this as well. Um, so and, and sparkles, you do get sparkles as well. Lots of things for the um, uh, candy for the eyes. So really nice. Uh, which one have we got here? This is, was a real surprise. This is the um, uh, ooh, what's this one called? Star blue, midnight uh, blue, something like that. Yeah, it's blue and brown. Which originally I thought, well, it's cheap enough. I'll add it to the collection. But when I got it out of the box, my God, the chatoyancy is spectacular. For an inexpensive pen, there's pens, if you, quite honestly, and I think one of my um, uh, viewers uh, made a comment about these pens or some similar pen and said, look, you know, if you stick an Italian brand name on this, you could charge hundreds for it. But Moon Man have produced an acrylic material, well, I don't know whether they produced it, but they got hold of this acrylic material and incorporated it into their pen. And it has created this stunning, stunning pen. So you don't need to spend hundreds or even thousands on a pen if you're after an attractive finish, because the Chinese have you covered. <clears throat> so, Moonman M600S, green. A pen which I thought I would originally absolutely hate, because I avoided it like the plague. And one of the Chinese sellers that I bought these pens from uh, eBay on, uh, from, I ordered... A green and a teal. And they sent a teal. No, I ordered whatever it was. No. I was, it was two separate sellers. There was a green teal and a blue teal. <clears throat> and the sellers were make, making a bit of a hash of the description. And I ordered a teal and got sent the green. So this is the green version of this pen. Whoop. Um, which, when I got it out, I thought, oh my god, it's even worse than, uh, than I imagined in... Uh, in the flesh but it is actually really quite a nice pen it's very unusual it's got this sort of whole camouflage khaki military thing going on which i actually think is it's really quite nice no chatoyancy or anything in that one and the moon man m600 amber which was an unusual color and i was absolutely blown away with this brown sparkly acrylic and the um chatoyant pearl white grey that's in here really 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 attractive and unusual finish so yeah sparkly brown I don't often see that sort of thing so yeah really pleased with these pens absolutely love you using those joy to behold whenever I uh, use them so this year hasn't all been about the Moon Man M600S there's been all sorts of other things going on and I'm and on the subject of sparkly pens, there is my version of the Bennu pens. This is my repurposed Jinhao 159, which I uh, did a little how-to guide back in the summer this year. And I used acrylic nail varnish and lacquer and things and created this very glitzy Jinhao 159, which has actually held up really, really well. Um, I did use this for many months, and the finish has it's certainly uh, held itself together without any chipping, nothing's fallen off, no sparkles dropped off anywhere, and um, yeah, really pleased with that. So that, that was quite a nice little experiment, and we'll be doing more of those in, uh, in the uh, future. So what else have we got? Well... This year, I think I did end up concentrating on certain brands. Now, for me, um, Lamy became my go-to brand for quite some time. Uh, this is the Lamy Studio Aquamarine, which was a uh, special edition for 2019. I have heard some people say that it is no longer available, but I'm sure you'll be able to find one of these if you wanted one somewhere, even if it's uh, uh, somebody selling one on eBay, because I know some people did buy it and then sold it again after being inked up once or twice. Um, I really like it. This colour is coming out bluer than it is. It is more of a um, metallic teal, 
in real life and it has unfortunately that slippery metal lamy uh, studio section which i know some people don't like but i actually do um so this is a very very nice pen i really enjoy using this one so that's the lamy studio aquamarine and i'll just pop that there Lamy 2000, iconic design, my rather lengthy uh, review and opinion of the Lamy 2000 on my channel uh, has had something like 2,000 views this year, which is a phenomenal amount. I was actually quite surprised because I thought, well, everyone knows the Lamy 2000, um, so they're never going to need to uh, watch a video review of, uh, of my opinion and thoughts about the Lamy 2000 but clearly they did um, and it's quite strange because on the uh, fountain pen network on Facebook you do see a lot of people commenting my grail pen is the Lamy 2000 my next pen I want to spend money on is the Lamy 2000 um, so yeah there are still people coming into this hobby who haven't discovered this pen and this is almost a daily writer for me um, I just love the design of it and it writes well it's very very comfortable it's just a great everyday but very stylish pen. I know some people don't like the Lamy design, uh, Lamy 2000 design, but I really, really do. So that is always up there in my top pens, always will be. And the Lamy Safari Stroke All Star. This is an All Star. This is a um, uh, purple uh, version of the Lamy All Star. Now love it or hate it and some people love it like me they end up collecting all the different color variants and some people absolutely hate it because this paper clip style clip and it rather hideous design because let's face it when i first got into fountain pens this comes up as a beginner's pen and i looked at it and i thought it's a hideous dated 1980s design um but i ended up really liking Lamy because of the Lamy 2000 and ended up with one of these pens and before I knew it I had quite a few colours and now I have a whole drawer full because I really love them. They're great. Um, the nibs can be hit and miss but they're more hit than miss so I'm quite happy with them. These end up, I've almost always got one of these inked up. So Lamy Safari, Lamy All Star there's almost always one of those inked up somewhere in my uh, pen rotation. And quite honestly, I can't uh, can't really knock them. I mean, I, I don't really like the design. I think the converters that you use with these pens are terrible. The paper clip clip, ugh, it's not a nice pen, but they're good knockabout pens and they write well. And I can't help but love them. So I'm willing to get past the looks. Lamy Safari, Lamy All Star, you're beautiful on the inside. So, what else has been uh, been in my recommended top pens this year? Well, uh, let's have a look. The Jin Hao, there had to be a Jin Hao pen in here. Jin Hao Dancing Horses design, um, which I have had inked up since I bought it from a seller on eBay. Um, and I, I really like it. I think it's a great pen. And I've had it inked up with the same ink for many, many months. I'm just going to find a page because I want to talk about inks in this video as well. So let's just show you this ink. Uh, so the ink is J.O. Barn. Gris Barrage. Why am I showing you this? Well, if you have missed my various videos which feature this pen um, and ink this 
Ink really, really sold J.O. Barn inks to me because it's a grey, dark grey ink with a lovely gold shimmer and it flows beautifully. It's wet and yeah, it's a really, really lovely ink. Really good gold shimmer. There we go. It's a bit out of focus, but you can see it's all there. Really, really, really nice. Love it. So, that pen and ink has featured in my pen rotation for a very long time this year. Um, did a review of this pen very recently. Um, it's the Ranga Regular Bamboo. Uh, this hasn't been uploaded to YouTube yet, so that is coming very, very soon. Um, and I love this pen. I think it's great. It's it's a big pen, but it's not huge. Um, it's been a favourite of mine because of this nice size, and I love the colour and the design. It makes me uh, sort of think back to this hot, long, hot summer that we had here in the UK, where I was writing in the evenings, thinking I was on a tropical beach. This sort of brings back memories of that because it's very sort of tropical and jungly. And on the subject of Ranga pens, yeah this baby did a review of this earlier this year and yeah i completely love this pen broad nib decent size chunky pen really really good so this has been inked up for well all the time i've had it basically and yeah great pen Let's get on to yet another blue pen. Excuse the uh, noise in the background there. The washing machine's suddenly gone onto a spin cycle. It'll stop in a minute. This pen, Pen BBS 308, in the Galaxy finish. So this blue, chatoyant, sparkly material so i think this year is also the year of blue for me i've never really been a fan of blue um and i've ended up with more blue inks and blue pens this year than i ever would imagined i would have ended up with so really really nice finish nice acrylic section same material always good so yeah I love the Pen BBS 308 and I have bought quite a few Pen BBS pens uh, this year. So, yeah, I think I've started to explore Pen BBS quite a lot more than previously. Lovely material. Right, okay, last blue pen Diplomat Aero. I absolutely love this pen. This is, this is how a pen should be. As far as I'm concerned, this is up there with the, almost, with the um, Lamy 2000. And mainly because this nib is so smooth. I mean, it, you can't feel it. It's not glass smooth. There's enough feedback to tell that you're actually writing because I'm doing this over the top of the camera and I can feel what I'm doing. Um... But wow, it is smooth. And this is a broad nib. And I have been blown away with this pen. Once again, like the Lamy 2000, I love the design. This Zeppelin, um, sort of mid to late 20th century style Zeppelin shape and design. And the, the feel of it, the texture and everything is absolutely great. Um, I will be doing a review of the Diplomat Aero in due course because I have got one or two colour variations. So, great pen, cartridge converter, takes standard international cartridges, so that's always good. Um, but wow, these nibs are great, like really great. Um, it's a nicer writing experience than the Lamy 2000 for me. But the pen isn't quite as nice. It's 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 lacking the finesse of the Lamy 2000. So there we go. That's my thoughts on that.
Right. The Baoke. B-A-O-K-E. PM126 and 128. These pens have been inked up since I bought them from a seller in the UK. Um, they're Chinese. And, well, these are really, really good pens to use. Very smooth nibs. Let's, uh, let's just show you the line variation. Let, let, just watch this closely. I'll do this down here. So, no pressure whatsoever. And then you can flex out quite a bit. So, yeah. Not for saying these are flex nibs, and no way in the world would I want to push them. But, you can see, really good quality nibs, really good writers, very wet. Um, nice attractive sort of 60s 70s uh, design um, so these pens with a very nice capping click uh, have been in my daily writing uh, everyday carry pen pot for a very very long time so what else have we got ah now I did mention Lamy um, just bear with me one moment. Just need to uh, just grab something. Back in a moment. Right. Had to get some pens which I'd forgotten. And I was looking for. And then realised I actually had them in my pocket. Because these are pocket pens. If you don't recognise it. This isn't the Chinese knockoff. These are Caveco pens. Now this year Caveco produced some um, if you like, special editions of the Sport pen, the very popular, very old Sport. Uh, so Caveco produced the Frosted Sport pens and a range of what I consider to be quite fruity, summery, girly? Can I say girly? Colours? Um, like this banana and blue papaya, I think this is. This is something like, I don't know, tropical banana. Um, and I did a review of this, and it was an interesting um, interesting way of doing it because I couldn't really figure out what to do because Caveco released the Frosted Sport at the same time earlier this year when Lamy issued the um, pastel, three different pastel colours of the uh, Lamy Safari. And I love both pens, don't get me wrong. Um, so I kind of couldn't figure out whether to review the Lamy and review the Caveco separately. And I thought, you know what, this year, 2019, has been a year of pastels. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a review of both the Lamy Safari 2019 Special Editions and the Caveco Frosted Sport 2019 Special Editions in a bit of a shootout. And... At the time, I actually thought, no, I, I, I love Lamy. I really, really like Caveco. But at the end of the day, Caveco, for me, actually did a better job with their colours this year. Far more um, attractive, better quality uh, nibs. Um, I mean, I've got quite a lot of these Caveco sports. And their nibs are so consistent. I mean, they're not spectacular. They're just steel nibs. But they write. I've never had to tinker with a Caveco nib. And as far as Lamy nibs go, I'd say that I probably have to tinker with maybe a quarter of all the nibs that I've had on Lamy pens. Safari and All Star because they, they're scratchy and just not quite tuned correctly. So from the quality control point of view, Caveco... And the Caveco Sport colours this year took it from Lamy. So if they went head-to-head, to head to head, which I kind of did in my review of these two uh, two brands, two uh, models, um, yeah, the, the Safari pastels were okay, but the Caveco Frosted Sport pastels were better. So always have a Caveco Sport inked up. Um, as it happens, they aren't, but I have got here a Caveco Ice Sport in my pen case thing, uh, with uh, diamine, diamine, no, diamine, um, red dragon, so quite a dark brown red ink, I'll show you that, 
because this is something that I don't want to skip too much on inks. You want to see some of these things in use. So there is Red Dragon, which is a brownish red, quite dark red. It's not the sort of red I'd use for um, correcting things, but it is more of an everyday writing red. So, next pen, the Twisby Go. This pen did attract a lot of interest at first because it is Twisby's cheapest pen. Um, and I think a few people, myself included in the early days, actually were a bit, I don't know, a bit annoyed with the materials that Twisby had used. Yes, it's a cheap version, but they did kind of go a little bit on the cheapo side with, um, with the quality of their plastics. This is, I'm guessing, injection moulded. It's not nice acrylic. It is a plastic. And there's different types of plastic used all over the pen. The barrel is different to the section. The section is like this milky opaque stuff. Got a clear cap. There's a lot of weird stuff going on with this pen. Um, and I know some people didn't like the design. But I have reviewed this pen. So head back through my reviews if you want to know what I actually really think about this pen. But for me, I have always had one of these inked up since it was released. And I love them. I've got two or three, I've got, I've got three of these pens now, different nibs in them. Um, and I think they're really, really good because they're fun. They're reliable. Way more reliable than many other pens. Um, and they're great. Snap cap. Easy to hold, com very comfortable. Um, yeah, there's just so much going on which I like about this pen. And I thought it was damned ugly at first, but I've actually really come to appreciate the design of this. It's really industrial looking. It's, it's kind of... At first I thought, oh, it looks a bit like a sort of school, sort of fun novelty pen with this plunger thing. But the more I've used this pen over 2019 the more I've come to really appreciate the fact that this actually looks like a quite a different design. It makes itself look like it's not a fancy fountain pen. This is, you know, nuts and bolts, down the pub fountain pen. Um, it's really, really not fancy at all. Is it ugly? I'm not saying it's a pretty pen, but yeah, it's for me one of the more interesting um, designs and I love the industrial design of this pen so yeah always had one of these inked up really like them what else well I haven't brought any inked up but I have one in my uh, pen roll that I take to work the Jinhao 51A I have had one of these inked up since 2018 at least, usually two, and they are great. And I'm not a fan of extra fine nibs, um, but these are really good writers, and they're great on really rubbish um, copy paper at work. And I like the whole, you know, Parker style slip cap, hooded nib, cartridge converter. You can eye drop of them, though I never have actually eye dropped any of mine, um, and they're just really, really good. So these Jinhao 51As have been, yeah, absolute workhorses for me over 2019. And let's get on to the last few bits here. So the pens that I have, yeah. You'll probably recognise the pen if you don't know it already, but if you don't, let's just show you something. Ooh, a bit railroad, railroad, uh, railroading, a bit of a giveaway. Big thick lines, lots of flex, it's the Noodler's Ahab. This is the Burmese Ruby version. Um, I had some of these pens in 2018. Tried them and they wrote so badly 
I ended up putting them back in the drawer, never using them until this year when I thought, you know what, I want to try out Flex Nibs again. Um, <laughs> sorry, if you could smell this, you'd laugh because this is a good foot away from my nose and I can smell this pen from there. <laughs> the Noodler's Ahab has got a real awful odour about it because of the material, the resin they use. Um, anyway, and I really ignored these pens. And then I thought, no, I'm going to see if I can fiddle around with the nib and the feet. And then I learned that you can actually fix these things. And I did put a video together earlier this year about that fix. So I did it to all of my Noodler's Ahabs. And these pens, I've always got a few inked up because I just enjoy using them. I mean, it's great. It's, it's fun. I'm not saying it's an everyday uh, writer by any stretch, but you get this wonderful, easy, effortless line variation. And if you've got a nice ink that provides you with lots of shading or even sheen, these are the pens you want to be sticking them in because you can get really, really good, uh, good results out of them. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's the sheen. There we go. Right, this is... Uh, Diamine, uh, Diamine Robert. So it's a red, well, purpley red ink with a green sheen. And the Ahab, Noodler's Ahab, lays down enough ink for this to be really, really good. So you can see that lovely green sheen there. This is, um, <laughs> this is, I believe, I'm trying to get the names right. Maureen, Diamine Maureen which is a blue ink with this lovely red sheen. It's not a hugely uh, sheening ink, but it's, it's interesting anyway. So those are two sheening inks that I really enjoy using in my Noodler's Ahabs because it really can get the best out of the inks. So, yeah, Noodler's Ahab. That's been a bit of a thing this year, and I've started to, uh, to get into sheening inks. 2019 for me... Um, yeah, don't fear the shimmer. Um, I really got into shimmering inks, sheening inks, and yeah. You know what? At the end of the day, the fountain pens, you can clean most of them out easily. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to, you know, have sleepless nights over not being able to clean out all the shimmery, glittery particles out of a pen because, you know, you can do it. It's not the end of the world. And... What else can I talk about? I just want to briefly touch on inks because I've actually started to um, categorise, well, not categorise, but actually record my inks in this thing, index cards. This is from Sainsbury's, UK supermarket. And I think these index cards, this pack, uh, cost something like, I don't know, £1, £1.80, something like that. And these are absolutely invaluable because I've started recording ink notes and writing samples of all of my inks that I use. Krishna See at Night, this was a standout ink for me in 2019. Krishna Inks came into the UK um, and yeah, some of their inks don't sheen, there's not a lot about them. See at Night, I love the colour, it's sort of very black teal blue. Um, with a lovely, lovely, easily uh, one of the best red sheens there is, Diamine. I want to get to what I believe is my ink of 2019. You see Krishna Wild Cherry here. Nothing really fancy about that. Online Rose. This was a surprise. I bought a very attractive box set of uh, online inks. Rose lavender orange and cranberry i think it was which are scented inks and colored accordingly virtually no uh, odor from them whatsoever unless you spill the bottle um but they're really nice inks to write with really really good so i've been very happy with those what i'm looking for is my ink of 2019 which i kind of kind of decided for an everyday colour 
Pure Pens, based in the UK, Pure Pens Flower of Scotland. Definitely my, if you like, everyday go to ink of 2019. As you can see, I wrote this uh, sample in Alarmy 2000. Um, these inks for Pure Pens are actually produced by Diamine. Um, so it's one of theirs, and it is really good purple blue. Really, really good. But there is one other novelty sort of ink which has been my absolute joy to use this year. And quite honestly, if they sold it in bigger bottles, I'd probably buy a litre of this stuff because this is, this is such fun. Krishna Jungle Volcano. It's such a shame. I haven't been able to get the sheen to show up on this particular paper. But it is, it's not the best orange, I must admit. It's a nice orange, it's not the best. But, oh my God, green sheen. Orange sheen in green. No, orange ink, sheen in green. Um, which is on the right paper with the right nib. Absolutely spectacular. It really does sum up the whole jungle volcano thing. It's great. It's a tropical looking ink. So, that's my roundup of 2019. Um, I will wish you all all the very best for 2020 and the new decade. Uh, may you all enjoy using and learning about your fountain pens, inks and papers. Uh, and have a great time, whatever you do, in 2019. I wish you all the luck, health, wealth and prosperity that you desire. And I will see you all next time. So thank you very much for watching this. Bye.